Charlie Chaplin, the screen's most famous clown, was born in London in 1889. His vaudeville parents battled unemployment and the bottle, and Charlie experienced poverty and hunger, experiences that later found their way into his classic films. Chaplin toured with a stage company as a nine-year-old and left home to make his own way in show business aged 14. In 1912, Chaplin joined the Keystone Pictures studio in California and put his vaudeville talents to good effect as a comic actor in a series of popular silent films. His first appearance was in the one-reel comedy Making a Living in 1914. It was Chaplin's second film, Kid Auto Races at Venice, that his best-known character, The Tramp, first made an appearance. An appealing vagrant, both innocent and world-weary, The Tramp strutted across the screen and into audiences' hearts. Chaplin himself had no idea of the type of character he would play in the movie until he donned some ill-fitting clothes. He said, the moment I was dressed, the clothes and the makeup made me feel the person he was. I began to know him, and by the time I walked on stage, he was fully born. By 1918, Chaplin was successful enough as an actor and director to open his own studio asserting complete creative control. In 1919, he co-founded the United Artists Film Distribution Company with fellow actors Mary Pickford, Douglas Fairbanks, and director D.W. Griffith in an attempt to claw back power from the rapidly developing Hollywood studio system. Although he often engaged in the usual keystone slapstick antics, Chaplin's little tramp was also a ladies' man. And Chaplin, too, had a weakness for women, especially young ones. His first marriage to 17-year-old Mildred Harris was disastrous. The couple had a son who lived tragically just two days, and the marriage lasted barely two years. But the emotional turmoil had a creative effect, and Chaplin became inspired by the idea of acting with a little boy as a sidekick. Fortuitously, he discovered pint-sized Jackie Coogan on stage, an eight-year-old prodigy whose perfect imitations of Chaplin produced howls of laughter from audiences. In 1921, the film The Kid became Chaplin's biggest success to date. It was the first feature-length film to effectively combine drama and comedy and set a new standard for motion pictures. The arrival of sound by the early 1930s was a dilemma for a performer who made his reputation in pantomime. Although Chaplin wrote a script for modern times, he decided against adding dialogue to the film, instead experimenting with sound effects. The film was notable for the character of the Gamine, played by Chaplin's main love of the 1930s, Paulette Goddard. She also starred in The Great Dictator, Chaplin's great satire about the rise of Nazism. But the relationship had ended amicably by then. Three years later, he married 18-year-old Una O'Neill, 34 years his junior. The couple had eight children together and remained married until his death. Chaplin's later years were marred by persecution from anti-communist government officials in the tabloid press who hounded him for his left-wing sympathies. He was forced into exile in Switzerland, where he was received with open arms. Charlot, as he was known in Europe, received many honors, including Holland's Erasmus Prize, which was presented by Prince Bernhard in 1965. Charlie the Tramp, Charlie the defender of the right to live of the humble, the poor, the oppressed, Charlie with a generous heart, who has been able to charm millions of people of all intellectual levels. Charlie, the eternal, sensitive, and indestructible nobleman. Sir Charles Chaplin died on Christmas Day in 1977, but the tramp lives on in Saddleroyd, an immortal reminder of the funniest and saddest clown of all time. <laughs>